All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another tutorial in geometry. Um, for this one, we're going to be looking at areas of triangles and other quadrilaterals. We are jumping into a new chapter here, chapter 9 in our book. Um, chapter 9 has everything to do with two-dimensional figures. So we're going to be looking at two-dimensional figures this chapter, and then the next chapter we'll jump up to three-dimensional things. A few of the topics that we're going to see here today are things that you are familiar with already. For example, definition of perimeter. You know that perimeter is the distance all around an object. If you add up all the sides together, you get the perimeter. Distance all around a polygon. Area, on the other hand, sometimes is a little more difficult to define. Area is going to be the number of little squares, of square units you can fit into an object. Um, for example, let me show you here. For example, if we have a rectangle, and the rectangle is 7 by 3. In other words, there are three different rectangles that we can fit in this direction and seven that we can fit in this direction. To get the area of this rectangle, all we need to do is simply count up how many um, little boxes we have. One, two, three, four, five, six. Looks like I need a little more here. Count up all the boxes. Looks like there's three by seven, so there's 21 boxes. We'd say that this rectangle is then 21 square units big. Some areas for you. Um, please copy these area equations down for each of these shapes. Uh, I believe you know several of these equations already, but please do copy each of these down. You will need to memorize these for the mastery test. Um, yeah, you're going to need to have these down. First one, parallelograms are just like rectangles. You can do base times height, get the area of that rectangle, or the parallelogram, square, what have you. At any point in time, it's going to be base length times the height of that thing. Notice that the height is not this piece right here. Instead, the height is just from top to bottom, straight up and down. Triangles are always half of a rectangle. If you were, let's say, to draw a rectangle around this shape right here, I know I can get a rectangle eventually. Here we go. Around this shape right here, this triangle is taking up half the space that this one would. Notice that this space right here is equal to this space. This space here is equal to that space. The triangle is taking up currently half the space of a rectangle, so it's half of base times height. Trapezoid. Think back last, um, last year when you were doing averages, averaging a couple of different numbers together. If you want to find the average of two numbers, you add them up, the two numbers, and then you divide by two. You're going to do the exact same thing with trapezoids. Trapezoids are kind of like rectangles, kind of like parallelograms, except they have two different bases. One base up top here, one base up down at the bottom. Take the average of those two bases, and then multiply that by height. So average of bases times height. All these equations are generally about the same. They're, they're similar to each other where you're doing a base times a height equation. Very last one we're going to look at here, kites and rhombi, or rhombuses. If you have the diagonals, remember from last year, Diagonals are distances from one corner to another corner. So this corner over to that corner. We have diagonal 1 and diagonal 2. Multiply those together, diagonal 1 times diagonal 2, and divide that by 2. Or in other words, we could say 1 half diagonal 1 diagonal 2. That gives us our area of a kite or a rhombus. Now we can use each of these equations. First off, notice in this parallelogram, we don't know the height of the parallelogram. We'd certainly like to know the height of this parallelogram right here. We don't know it yet, but I do notice that this parallelogram's height is sitting on the outside. I also notice we have on this triangle that's drawn on the outside a side of 3 and a hypotenuse of 5. You might think that this is familiar. It definitely is. Our height of this is definitely going to be one of those three, four, five triangles, Pythagorean triples. Height's going to be four. So then if you multiply things out, area is equal to base times height. So area is going to be equal to our base, which is six. The base is just this distance here. It doesn't include the three. Base times our height value of four. 
multiply 6 by 4, 6 times 2 is 12, double, double that again, you're going to get a 24. Units, where all of our lengths are in inches, so we're going to write inches squared. Our area is 24 inches squared for this figure. In this next diagram, we have a trapezoid. We're given one of the bases. We're given 23. We're given the height, 11. We're not given the other base, though. We need to find this other base. We Notice on top, we are given, though, that the area is 231. As we start out this problem to try to find the missing base, start out by writing down the equation. We know area is equal to base 1 plus base 2. Divide that by 2 times by our height, multiply it by our height. If we put all these values into an equation now, we know our area is 231. We know base 1 is 23. We don't know base 2 yet. We do know that we need to divide by 2 because we're going to do that every time. And we are going to multiply this all by an area of, or a height of 11. What we have up top here, on the very top, pretend like these are missing parentheses, visible parentheses. If we're going to do a reverse order of operations to start getting rid of things on the right side of the equation, we need to leave that 23 plus B2 until the very last. Let's start getting rid of other things. I notice we have a multiply by 11. Let's divide both sides by 11 here. So that side, this side, both sides will divide by 11. Putting 231 into my calculator, 231 divide by 11, I get a 21. That means that, let's see if I switch to green, if you can see 21 is equal to, the 11's cancel out, those two cancel out, we're left with 23 plus B2 all over 2. I wanted to take a quick note. Notice this B2, it does not stand for B squared. I get that error a lot. B2 does not stand for B squared. It simply stands for that's the second base. Looking at our equation now, I notice that we have a 2 on the bottom of, an e of a fraction. We can go ahead and multiply both sides by 2. So I'm going to multiply this side by 2, multiply the other side by 2. That's going to yield us right up here. On the one side, we get a 42, and on the other side, we get 23 plus B2, because the 2s cancel out. As a very last step, you can probably guess what we need to do. We have 42 equals the 23 plus B2. We can go ahead and subtract 23s from both sides. Cross it out, cross it out. 42 minus a 23, 42 minus a 23. We're going to get a 19. All right, 19 is equal to B2. As always, we should test our, um, test our answer. We did get a 19. If we go ahead and plug that back into our equation, take 19 plus the 23, we're going to get a 42. 42 divided by the 2. I'm putting these values in up top here. 42 divided by a 2 gives us a 21. And then 21 times 11 does get us back to the 231, so that works. A couple of last problems here. First one off, we have a kite. We want to find the area of the kite. Start out by writing the equation down. Area is equal to 1 half d1, d2. We don't know either of our diagonals yet. Actually, I take that back. We do know this diagonal. Half of it's 9, so the whole thing has to be 18. Let's go and write that down. A equals 1 half times 18. But that's still going to be multiplied by some other number that we don't know yet. We need to figure out how big this other diagonal is. Looking at this diagram, I notice that we have a 9 and we have a 41. A 9 and a 41. We also have a right triangle because it is a kite. Remember that from last semester. So if we go ahead and write an equation here, 
we could say something like 9 squared plus x squared is equal to 41 squared. I'm going to put squareds in each of these. 9 squared plus x squared is equal to 41 squared. Solving that down, I'm going to go and put in my calculator 41 squared. I'm going to subtract 9 squared. So 41 squared minus 9 squared because I'm going to subtract it to the other side. We're going to wind up with an x squared is a 1600 in blue now square root both sides square root both sides we want to get rid of that we're going to wind up with an x is a 40 which seems pretty reasonable if this distance is 41 that that distance is 40. i'm going to write that down this last side here we want to know how big it, uh, side y is we don't know it yet we do know that we have a 915 so we could do the exact same thing 9 squared plus y squared is equal to 15 squared. I'm going to go ahead and subtract the 15 squared, 1, 5 squared, minus a 9 squared. Notice that you don't do the 15 minus the 9, but the 15 squared minus the 9 squared. That's going to leave us here with an y equals, or y squared rather, is equal to a 144. If you know anything about baking, a baker's dozen, or a dozen is 12. 12 twelves or a dozen dozen is going to be 144, so y is going to be a 12. We can go and put that down there. We could say that this whole distance is 40, or is 40 plus the 12, which is a 52. As a last step here, we're going to find our area. Area is equal to 1 half. I'm going to plug this into my calculator. 1 half times 18 times a 52. We're going to get 468, 468. We should use some sort of units because everything's in feet. We're going to put feet. Since it's area, it's going to be feet squared. All right, on to our last example. If we want to find the area of a shaded figure, we don't know how big this area is yet, and we don't have an equation for this figure. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw an extra line, just an extra line like that. Currently we have a box that's 7 by 6, so we can figure out that area pretty easily. Area is equal to 6 times 7, so area is equal to 42. We already know that area, all right? Millimeters squared. We want to find the area of this last little bit, this triangle down here. Notice that this side goes down all the way to 6. This one just goes to 3. That means that the remainder has to be 3 right here. The height has to be 3. The width, this distance is already 7. The whole thing's 12. So this side has to be 5. What the area of this triangle? Area is 1 half times 3 times 5. for 1 half times base times height. 1 half of 3 times 5 is going to be, well, 3 times 5 is a 15. 1 half of that is 7.5. Area is 7.5 millimeters squared. If we want to find the total area now, we could say something like area total is equal to 42 plus 7.5, which is going to be a 49.5 millimeters squared. Now that's all I've got for you. Your assignment for tonight, you're going to be practicing these. Please, please, please do your best to uh, remember the formulas. Try to get those in your head. You will not be able to use a note card cheat sheet for the mastery quiz that we have. You need to memorize these formulas. You're going to be using them in life as you're constructing things, in geometry as you're solving problems. You don't want to have to open up your geometry book every time you want to find the area of a triangle. Please memorize those. That's all I've got for you. As usual, if you have questions, email me. Let me know. Otherwise, have a wonderful day.